If you need some coins to add some ballers to your team, make sure you go ahead and check out MudReserve.com. Fast service, great rates, no need to rely on pack luck. Get yourself some coins, buy the players you want, use code SPREE at checkout for 15% off. What's going on everybody? Hope you're all having another fantastic day today. You can call me Spree and welcome back to another video. First of all, I just want to say thank you for all of the support. It has been crazy. We've been growing and growing. We just hit 300 subscribers, which is a huge milestone for me. So thank you very much for all the support. If you haven't already and you do enjoy the content, definitely think about popping down and hitting that subscribe button down below. Today, I want to go ahead and talk about something that I'm sure a lot of people will know, but I do understand there will be new people to Madden Ultimate Team, people who are just starting their journey. In particular, I think this is really going to help those of you who are running no money spent. People that choose to go no money spent have to grind, have to be really efficient and effective with what they do with their coins. They really need to make sure that they are making the most of pretty much everything that they do when they're playing the game. Otherwise, you can quickly get left behind by the god squads that are out there in Madden Ultimate Team. So let's go ahead and talk about how you get the most value from your cards, thinking about coins, thinking about training, and of course, thinking about your own time. Starting off in the binder, I know some of you would have already noticed the 82 overall sitting in the corner right there we've made some big time upgrades the team is looking really good but that's all going to be covered in the no money spent episode coming out later today keep an eye out for that it is going to be a banger getting back on topic it doesn't matter if you're opening packs if you're grinding solos you're always going to be picking up a bunch of cards now not all cards are going to be glitchy 86 87 88 overall cards that sell for a ton of coins you are going to have your binder filled up with a bunch of cards that realistically you don't want to have on your team that you want to get rid of there are some things that you should always be thinking about what you should be doing with those particular cards now the option that's going to be the most profitable the one that's going to make you the most coins is obviously going ahead and selling every single individual card now we'll talk about nat cards in a little bit but if you're going ahead checking the prices for these cards putting them up even if you're putting them up at the lowest current price, you're going to be able to sell these cards and you're going to make the most money from doing so. Now that might sound great, but there are a few issues with it. As you can see, I only have 183 things in my binder. What happens if you had 700, 800? Imagine how long it's going to take to sell all of those cards. You also have a limit of 20 cards that can be up on the auction block at any one time. So it's going to take a long time to be able to get through all of those cards. Another option popularized by a lot of YouTubers, a lot of people who go ahead and spend a lot of money is to just go ahead and quick sell these cards training is really expensive at the moment if you can get rid of these low overall cards get a bit of training you clear out your binder you feel good you have some training to go get some glitchy abilities it seems like a good idea but it really isn't. If there's only one thing you remember from this video, you don't want to be going ahead and quick selling your golds, your silvers, your NAT cards. There are much better options, much more effective ways of turning those cards into coins than just quick selling them for training. Now here we have Darnell Savage, he is an NAT. What that means is his quick sell value is half the usual value for his overall. The last thing you want to be doing is quick selling him, just getting 12 training from it. What you should be doing with your NATs, with your golds which aren't very valuable with your silver cards is going ahead and putting them into some sets now i know for some of you this may be your first time playing madden ultimate team this is the sets if you go into the exchange and then you go to the player exchange sets these are the ones that i want to be talking about today keeping it really simple these are upgrade sets you're going to put lower overall cards in a certain number of them and what will be spit out is a card of a higher overall within a certain range. So looking at this first one as an example, you give two 62 to 65 overalls and you will get a random 66 to 69 overall out of it. You can also do the same thing with gold cards and you can actually do the same thing with elite cards. Let's say you wanted to go ahead and sell all of your cards. Let's say you had 100 silvers. It would take you forever to sell them. You might get somewhere between 500 and 1,000 coins for doing it great it's good to take the coins what you could also be doing is putting all those cards into sets upgrading them and trying your luck to pull some cards that have much better value let's actually go ahead and do one of these sets just in case you have never seen it before so we're going to put two of our low overall silvers it's going to give us a pack we can go ahead and open up that pack straight away let's see what we're going to see are we going to get anything no we're just getting to get a higher overall silver card now while it's not particularly exciting to get a slightly higher overall silver card these exchange sets also give you a chance to go ahead 
and pull a power up. The prices of power ups definitely fluctuate throughout the year, but there are a bunch of very popular cards whose power ups are always expensive. I'm thinking 30, 40, 50, up to even 100,000 coins. Going back to my previous example, if you had 100 silvers, let's say you sold them all for 500 coins, right? In the end, you're gonna end up with 50K, 45,000 coins after tax. What you could be doing is putting those cards into exchange sets, trying your luck to pull one of these high value power-ups. Now you pull a couple of them, you're gonna make a bunch of profit. If you get a really good one, you might still make a bunch of profit. You might even take an L, right? You might go through and do it, you might get a few power-ups, you might not make as much coins as you would selling it, but you always have to think about time as well. Time is money. You don't want to be spending an hour trying to make 45k from some silvers that you have in your binder, when instead you could be having some fun exchanging these cards, opening some packs, trying to get a little bit glitchy. Maybe you're trying to find some of these power-ups to add to your team as well. You're going to be able to save yourself a lot of time. You're going to be able to have a lot more fun because you're going to be opening packs and you actually have a chance to profit significantly more by doing these exchange sets. These sets are also going to be a great use for your NAT cards. Now, you don't want to go ahead and quick sell them. You can't sell them. That's what it means to be non auctionable or tradable, but you can go ahead and put these into the sets so you can turn cards that can't be sold for coins, transform them into cards that could be auctionable, and at the same time, you're risking a little bit to try pull a power up, something of really good value. Now the last thing before we go ahead and exchange all of my low golds, my silvers, my NATs, is making sure you understand the value of your cards. For higher overall cards, maybe 77 plus, right? You have an implicit understanding that these cards are going to have some good value. Because of the theme diamonds, there are a bunch of lower overall cards that actually have a lot of value. There's a linebacker, I think, 40 bucks that's worth 50 to 60k. After my pack opening yesterday, I went ahead and checked some of my lower overall gold, and I had about a dozen that were worth somewhere between four and 6,000 coins. I couldn't believe it. I pretty much made as much from those low overall cards as I did from the five, six elites that I pulled from that pack opening. I think the main thing to stress is there is a balance in everything you do. Cards with good value you want to sell. Cards with low value you don't want to sell. You don't want to spend your time having to sell those cards. It's going to take a lot of time and it's probably not going to be worth your time. Put those cards into sets, risk it for the biscuit, try to pull a high overall power up, try to get something worth a lot of coins. It's going to be a good way to keep your binder nice and clean and to make sure you have as many coins at your disposal to go ahead and buy the players you want. I know it's been a lot of talking so far and not so much action. Let's go ahead and turn all of my silvers, my low golds that aren't worth very much. I've already gone ahead and checked plus my NET cards. Let's all put them into exchange sets, see how many packs we have at the end and then we can go through, rip them all, see how we go. I'll be back with you when all the packs are ready. A few moments later. We were able to turn all of those golds, those silvers, all of those NAT cards into 38 packs. Let's just go ahead and dive on into them. What we want to see obviously is power-ups, right? Power-ups is what is going to be able to make us some coins. When you get to those higher exchanges, so for silvers, the only thing you can pull that's good is a power-up. When you get into the gold range, 70 to 74, we get a power-up. Brandon Williams. Now I doubt Brandon Williams is one of those guys that's going to be particularly expensive, but when you get into something like the gold range, there are those low overall goals that are expensive. So you don't just need the power ups. There are going to be cards that have good value. When you get up to the 75 to 79, that range is even better because you're going to be able to get some good cards that have good value. If you get power ups in that range, you're talking Tyreek Hill, you're talking Aaron Donald, there's some glitchy guys in that range in particular. If you pull one of them, you're going to be able to make a bunch of coins. We're still going through right now. We haven't pulled anything particularly great. I'd love to see a good high overall power up something that's good value just to show you. We're gonna keep going through these. Another power up, what's that one? Juju Smith Schuster. Damn, I butchered that. Juju Smith Schuster. I don't think he's gonna have crazy, crazy value, but he's a power up. Might be able to get a few thousand coins from it. And all these other silvers that we're picking up as well, I'm gonna put those into the sets. Moving on next, another low overall gold, Nick Mullins. I know he's not too expensive. Onto the next one, another low overall gold, Hayden Hurst. I wonder, I wonder. Some of these cards I haven't particularly seen. Hey, what do we get right there? Kenny Clark. Kenny Clark's probably a popular card. Maybe going for a few thousand coins right there. 
when you're doing these, you're looking for guards like Jamal Adams, cards like Deion Jones, Jalen Smith. There are so many cards out there with really good high value power ups right here. Dang, even the rookie cards, if you get the right over rules, they're going to be able to pick up a few thousand coins. So, moving on next, we have our 75 to 79 over rules. These cards, at the very least, they're probably going to be worth a few thousand coins, right? What do we get? A 76. Probably get a few thousand coins for that. But if we get a power up, if we get a high overall card with some coinage, Jack Doyle, probably 5,000 coins right there. Easy way to turn those low overall golds, some of those NAT cards, into a card with actual value. Keeping it going, I'd love to see a power up, especially in this range. If I got Tyreek Hill, if I got Tyreek Hill, I would go crazy. That card's going for. Russell Wilson, that card might have some pretty good value. We should be happy with that one. This is our very last one. 79 overall, Chidobi Iwuzie. Within about 10 minutes, I turned 100 cards that didn't have particularly good value into about another 40 cards, some of which I'll be able to sell straight away, put them onto the block, turn them into coins. The rest, I'm gonna put them back into the exchange sets. Looking at a few cards as an example, we've got Russell Wilson right here. Does he have value? No, unfortunately not. What about someone like Kenny Clark as a power-up? Does he have value? 15,000 coins, easy money right there. Then someone like a Deron Payne, right? You've got 7,000 coins for a gold card right there. Some of these golds that we pulled are actually good examples of cards that you should be putting on the block right here. I would expect a card to be worth around 1,000 coins right there, 2,500. You can get some much better coinage by going ahead and selling that card. The next one, again, I don't know the value of this one. If we jump on in, even more, 3,500 coins you could sell it for. Go ahead, sell those cards. If they're anything less than maybe 1,000 coins, they should be going in the exchange set. And I think that's going to be about it. The main thing is just being smart with the cards that you have in your binder. Always try to make sure you're getting the most value for the cards you have. If you can get value from selling them, sell them. If you're not going to get good value from quick selling them, don't quick sell them. Put them into sets, open some packs, try to get lucky, try to get some great pulls, keep your binder clean, keep your coins up, and keep trying to make those upgrades to your team. Down in the comment section below, I want you to let me know the best power up you've pulled from doing these exchange sets. I know some of you would have already been doing it. If you found this video helpful, think about popping down, hitting that like button down below. Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. Thank you very much for coming through everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Keep an eye out for the no money spend video coming out a little bit later take it easy everyone you can call me spree and we out